With the release of Season 2 of Outer Banks just debuting, we thought it'd be cool to take a stroll over to Figure 8 and take a deep dive into Sarah Cameron's Outer Banks mansion. We all love Outer Banks and wish that we could live the Pogue lifestyle for a day, but instead let's switch things up and see what living life like a kook is really like. We all despise Ward Cameron, but we can't help but taking a liking to the beautiful architecture that Tanny Hill Plantation offers. Some of you may not know that Tanny Hill Plantation is actually a real place. The show was filmed in Charleston, South Carolina, and that is exactly exactly where you'll find Lowndes Grove, or as most of you may know it, Tanny Hill Plantation. Built in 1786, it is the only surviving plantation left on the Charleston Peninsula. The state spans across 14 acres of marsh and river land and features a historic six-bedroom and seven-bathroom mansion that offers 6,800 square feet of living space. The estate also offers a four-bedroom carriage house that is also known as the River House, and a three-bedroom groundskeeper's cottage. The estate was most recently sold to its current owner, Patrick Properties, in July of 2007 for $6,500,000. The property is now estimated to be worth north of $12 million, and I think with the newfound publicity that Outer Banks has brought to the property, the estate's value will only continue to rise. You probably ask yourself, does anyone actually live in this beautiful estate? And the answer is more or less no. The Grove is used primarily as a wedding and event venue. Yes, you heard that right, you can have your very own kook wedding. Imagine if Chase Stokes and Madeline Klein end up getting married one day, and this is the venue they choose. But having your very own dream wedding at the Tanny Hill Plantation will run you a good amount of money. Its estimated base prices start at $36,000 and only go up from there. And we wouldn't be surprised if with the publicity this place has received, it will see those prices increase over the coming years. As you make your way up to the gated property, you have a long winding driveway that brings to the front of the mansion that you will recognize from every episode of Outer Banks. The home is laid out exactly as it's portrayed in the show. Stepping inside, you have a sunroom that you will remember from season one when Ward threw Tom out of the house for disrespecting Sarah. What's nice is in the show they kept the exact architectural beauty this home offers and didn't pull any Hollywood magic and change it in any way. I can only imagine what it would be like to actually live inside this beautiful mansion. Easily my favorite part of the mansion is the spiral staircase that leads up to the second floor, where you'll find an expansive balcony that covers the front side of the home looking down on the front lawn. Stepping outside, you'll find the famed dock where, spoiler alert, Ward Cameron blew himself up in season two. I'm not sure if it's just me, but the dock looks looks much longer in real life, so it makes me wonder if they had to shoot the dock scenes elsewhere to accommodate for Ward's massive boat. A space outside that we didn't see in the show is the outside event space. This space is primarily used for wedding receptions and when decorated properly is a beautiful event venue. I sort of wish this is a place I could say I do. Additionally outside you'll find the River House which is an additional venue for events or smaller weddings. I can't remember if this building was ever showcased in Outer Banks, but it's definitely a nice addition to the estate. Lastly, tucked away on the edge of the property is where you'll find the caretaker's cottage, which is purposely kept out of the view from any shots in Outer Banks as it doesn't sport the same beautiful architecture that the rest of the property offers. But that just about wraps up our tour of Sarah Cameron's kook paradise. I would love to hear what your favorite part is about the $12 million estate by leaving it down in the comment section down below. As well, if you could step foot into either the kook or pogue lifestyle for a day, which one would you choose? That wraps up today's video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on all of our social media accounts located in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.